May 20th, 2013, that was the last time we saw an EF5 tornado. Now approaching 12 years. This one devastated Moore, Oklahoma, killing 24 people. Almost two years to the day before that, another EF5 tornado completely decimated Joplin, Missouri, killing 159 people. Meteorologist Mike Bettis was there just moments after both of these twisters. Look at the neighborhood that has been destroyed here. Cars have been flattened, overturned. The homes, some homes don't even exist anymore. This is a extraordinarily sad situation in Joplin. People are just looking for their loved ones. They're looking for family members. If you take a look here at this neighborhood, all, all I can say is it looks very reminiscent of what we saw last month in... Excuse me. In uh, Tuscaloosa. I was working that night, talking live and, and watching that live as it happened to Mike, and it, those are real emotions because he was seeing things he's never seen before. Now, fortunately, we, we haven't seen another EF5 tornado since these storms more than 10 years ago. But it does have tornado experts wondering why, because this is the longest stretch without an EF5 recorded in recorded history, but there's less than 1% chance of that happening. Anyways, so a new study might have some answers. To discuss that, let's bring in Dr. Joshua Warman, a renowned tornado researcher now with the University of Alabama at Huntsville. We really appreciate your time this morning. This new study says a contributor to seeing fewer high-end tornadoes is that the National Weather Service teams that are surveying the damage have become much stricter when labor labeling an EF4 or EF5 tornado. H how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, that's a different study um, uh, by uh, Tony Liza and his uh, collaborators. And um, what they did is look at statistically the fact that there have been very few uh, F5 tornadoes, in fact, zero in the last decade. And why is that? We don't think tornadoes have changed. Um, in fact, we know from my radar measurements that there have been several tornadoes, uh, at least with winds well over 200 miles an hour. Um, the standards for how we're measuring damage um, are getting more rigorously applied. And in fact, we're working uh, with engineers, structural engineers, to make those much better. And so some of the difference is due to different ways of measuring the damage in these storms. Others are the fact that we really don't know very well how strong the winds are in these strongest tornadoes. We're trying to measure them with mobile radars. We're trying to better quantify and assess the damage. Um, but there still are a lot of uncertainties. So the EF scale is a damage rating scale, unlike, say, the Saffir Simpson, the hurricane scale is just the wind speed. But like you said, you know, if you don't have the damage from those winds, you don't actually you can't really measure that. So uh, could there actually have been more EF fives in the past 12 years? We are certain that there have been many more tornadoes which could have caused EF four or five damage had they gone through well developed areas. Um, we see tornadoes with winds over 200 miles an hour most years, um, and they're most of the time over open areas. Or if they pass over towns, they don't pass over very strong structures. So it's impossible for the Weather Service to assess that they did EF5 levels of damage if they just weren't strong enough structures to damage. So there are a mix of different factors which are causing uh, this drought uh, of, of EF5 rated tornadoes, even though we know that stronger tornadoes are occurring. So how are scientists like yourself working to make the tornado rating system more objective? There's a major effort involving structural engineers, wind engineers, and meteorologists and radar meteorologists to improve the ways that scientists and engineers can estimate the winds in tornadoes. The EF scale of damage is just one of those uh, ways to measure the winds in tornadoes. We can look at satellite evidence of destroyed structures and trees. We can look at radar measurements. My radar trucks, for example, go in there and measure the winds sometimes. We can look at anemometers. Very rarely there's an anemometer uh, that measure, directly measures the wind in a tornado. Uh, so we're coming up with a standard where people can uniformly apply these different methods um, with strict standards of how to apply them to come up with the best possible wind estimates in these tornadoes. There's a lot uh, that we still need to learn, uh, but there's a lot that we're going to be doing better starting in probably about two years from now. All right, great information. Thank you so much for your time. This is Dr. Joshua Warman 
with the University of Alabama Huntsville. Thanks for joining us. I mean, it's a good thing we haven't had any EFIs, but there's evidence that they're, you know, they're happening. Yeah. And, but there's a lot more undeveloped areas than developed areas, so let's keep our fingers crossed. They keep missing people and our structures.